Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about why visceral fat is unhealthy. Now you may have heard that visceral fat only accumulates when we've filled our subcutaneous depots of fat. This personal fat threshold theory. It's wrong. And I'm going to explain today why visceral fat is unhealthy. Now as we talked about last time, every cell in the body communicates with the brain through a circuit. Almost always it is primarily through nerves. And last time we mentioned the vagus nerve as the primary communication avenue between the brain and the gut. Now the gut is a huge surface, 400 square feet. Top to bottom it's 30 feet long. It is a massive sensory organ, our biggest sensory organ in the body. And that huge surface communicates with the brain primarily through the vagus nerve. And last time we talked about afferent signaling, and those are sensory signals from the gut to the brain. And we talked about efferent signaling. Those are signals and messages from the brain to the gut. Now, all the organs that we consider visceral organs or viscera are innervated or communicate with the brain through the vagus nerve. These organs include the heart, the lungs, the liver, the pancreas, the kidneys, the intestinal tract. All of these viscera or organs communicate with the brain primarily through a circuit that involves the vagus nerve. Also, as we discussed last time, modern metabolic disease, including obesity, hypertension, cholesterol abnormalities, diabetes, coronary artery disease, all of these metabolic diseases are primarily driven by a dysfunction of this circuit between the cells and organs in the brain involving the vagus nerve. And the first thing to go is those afferent signals. Messages from the gut to the brain, those become dysfunctional, primarily as a result of hyperpalatable or ultra-processed foods. The body's not used to processing and ingesting those foods. They damage the vagus nerve, specifically those afferent signals, the signals from the gut and all the visceral organs into the brain. This leads to dysfunction in that circuit between all of these organs in the abdomen and the chest, disrupted circuit between the brain and the gut. And it is the, that disrupted circuit that is causing the accumulation of visceral fat and for those fat cells or adipocytes to be unhealthy, sort of unregulated, running off the rails, causing inflammation, overfilling, and causing disease. The difference between that visceral fat and the subcutaneous fat, and that is the fat everywhere in our body outside of the abdominal cavity and the chest cavity, those fat cells, the adipocytes, they communicate through the brain in circuits that do not involve the vagus nerve. That is how these two different compartments of fat are different primarily. So subcutaneous fat, whether it's in a metabolically healthy person or metabolically unhealthy person. Largely, the circuit of communication between those adipocytes and the subcutaneous uh, storage bins, if you will, those circuits are intact. So those adipocytes are fairly healthy. The adipocytes, the fat cells in the viscera around the organs of the abdomen, their means of communication with the brain has been disrupted. That is why those cells become dysfunctional. And in fact, there's good studies that show that it is disruption of that circuit between the gut and the brain that really drives the growth and accumulation of visceral fat. It involves specifically the vagus nerve to and from the liver, um, but it is dysfunction in that vagus nerve that is causing visceral fat to accumulate and all the associated metabolic problems. This idea of the personal fat threshold, it's not true. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit the data. Again, that idea is that 
a person fills up all the adipocytes, fat cells, and the subcutaneous uh, adipocytes. And once that is full, then it starts dumping fat into the viscera around the organs of the abdomen. It's just not true. That does not work. It's too simplistic, and that's not the way biology works. How do we know this? Well, a lot of avenues or lines of evidence. One of them is the simple correlation between what we call HRV, which is heart rate variable. And we talk more about that in another video on the autonomic nervous system. Heart rate variability, or HRV, it is directly proportional or a very good indication of the afferent signals from the gut into the brain. HRV, that is inversely correlated with the size or the amount of visceral fat. This is incredibly consistent. This is incredibly important and it is unappreciated largely in the medical community. HRV, we want HRV to be high. In metabolic disease, it is progressively low. Lower HRV means more dysfunction in the vagus nerve, specifically the signals going from gut into the brain. As that direction of communication, those signals going to the brain from the gut, as that becomes more dysfunctional, HRV decreases. And we see that preceding all of these metabolic diseases that we're talking about here, including the accumulation of visceral fat. Uh, there's a lot more evidence than that, but that bird's eye view, it is incredibly clear that it is dysfunction of the vagus nerve that leads to the accumulation and dysfunction of visceral fat. To review, visceral fat is unhealthy <clears throat> because that visceral fat communicates with the brain primarily through the vagus nerve. And modern metabolic disease is driven by dysfunction of those afferent signals between the gut and the brain through the vagus nerve. As that develops, the fat cells, the adipocytes around the viscera become more dysfunctional and uncontrolled. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe and push the like button. We'll see you next time.